Welcome back to Flipping PCs Until I Can Buy an Orangutan. On the last episode, we failed pretty much at everything. The TLDR of that episode is essentially don't sell over the summer, sell over Christmas instead. Well, with Christmas right around the corner, I thought I needed a, a little bit of a boost of energy and a boost of sales to prepare for the onslaught of all the cases and parts that I would have to purchase. And that's when I stumble upon this guy. This Facebook Marketplace seller made me do something that I promised myself I would never do. So real quick, let's, let's look through some of his sales. This guy has popped up in the last month or two and he's been selling these PCs like hotcakes. One of the reasons obviously is it's extremely low budget. They're like in the four to five hundred dollar range that he's selling. I'm trying to sell my PCs for six hundred plus at least some over you know nine hundred over a thousand and obviously a place like Facebook Marketplace as we've said in previous flipping videos is just a lot better for those lower end budget builds. I honestly don't know how this guy makes money on these. I mean he uses a lot of those Xeon CPUs or like Ryzen 1600s or 2600s. Pairs them with like a 1060 6 gigabyte or an RX 580 which we do that a lot in this channel especially around Christmas time but at a sale price of like 450 500 I don't know how he's making money. <laughs> so one of the things this guy does he's embraced the the love of fish tank which I commend him for but he puts an MATX motherboard inside of an ATX case. He even sometimes will use one fan GPUs inside of these cases and it's just I it I honestly don't love the look of it but he slaps on some cable extensions in there which according to ZTT is all you need yes, and there's so much space in these PCs and I honestly think they kind of look tacky with the MATX inside of an ATX and the one fan GPU sometimes it's just I'm not a big fan of the looks but his sales and numbers speak for themselves so I thought why the heck am I opposed to doing what he's doing why am I not putting MATX motherboards inside of ATX cases and unfortunately, that's exactly what I did. Against my better judgment, because I needed some sales, I decided to grab an MATX motherboard and put it inside the Sama Nevu 4361. You remember this from the last episode. Great, sleek design, beautiful case. It is full ATX. And another issue is this case has a USB-C header. Now, along with all these, you know, dimensions like MATX, ATX stuff that I hate doing and I try not to ever do, I hate building in cases that can't utilize all the ports. So I hate putting in a non-USB-C motherboard inside of a USB-C case and just telling the person what, like, don't use the USB-C. But again, this guy's selling these things inside of the Sama Nevu 4361 and similar cases. So here we go. And of course, things already started going bad. As soon as I opened up this case, I I bought this a couple, three months ago. I'd already been sitting on this for a while. I discovered that the case was delivered bent. And I never realized this, so I can't return it. I'm way past the return window. So of course I open it up, it's bent. I fall to my knees in the Walmart parking lot. And I showed it to my wife as she's watching Gilmore Girls and she said, just grab a hammer. That's exactly what I did. I just grabbed a hammer, just whacked at that sucker. And honestly, it worked pretty well. I don't, if you're gonna go this route, be careful. There were a couple times I was hitting it that I thought, okay, this is a little risky. I wasn't necessarily hammering it in. It was more like, you know, using the leverage of the hammer to kind of try to bend things in the back of the ship. Anyway, you know, I'm not claiming to have the ability to fuse metal or anything. So just try to try to avoid this if you can. Unpack things, buy things one to two at a time, build right away so you can avoid my mistakes. Honestly, at this point, my flipping series has gone from showing you successes of how you should do things to more how you shouldn't do things. Failure is a good teacher. So inside of this beauty, we're gonna put in the Ryzen 2600X, pair it with obviously a Thermal Ride Assassin King. It's a beautiful CPU cooler. Put a Sapphire Pulse RX 580. It's honestly a beautiful, beautiful looking GPU and it kind of goes along with this matte, shiny look in this. Motherboard, of course, the Azurac B450M AC R2.0, so we can at least have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in there. We got a Western Digital Green 1 terabyte. I've been told this is kind of a slow, not great SSD, but for a budget build that I'm gonna put in the 500 something range, it's gonna be fine. Some Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigabytes, RAM kit, 3200 megahertz. Thermal take tough power, GX2, 600 watt PSU. You don't need 600 watt for a build like this, but it's just, it was a cheap PSU that I had on hand. And it's ketchup and mustard cables, another thing that I hate to use, but I was going to do the cable extension, so. And of course, the beautiful Samaneview 4361. And I regret to announce it worked. Well, not regret for my wallet, but regret that something that was against my principles actually worked. This thing sold, get this, within 
three days. After sitting on bills for like three to four months on average in the last few months, this, this changes everything for me. Gone are the days where I actually care how things look and try to make things work and USB-C headers work. Screw all of that. It's all about making it as flashy as possible while cutting as many corners as possible. Don't necessarily do that. That's Before I get to the sales price and the communication with the buyer, let's benchmark this PC. Wait, I don't have a, I don't have a place to benchmark this here. So if only I had a bigger desk. That's where FlexiSpot comes in. Now, full disclosure, FlexiSpot is not paying me for this, but they did send this to desk to me for free for me to review in a video. And I will say this thing is impressive. The E7 Pro can handle up to 440 pounds of weight. That's pretty insane. 101. As you can see, I trust their desk so much I put my baby on it. What the heck are you doing? You can lift it up all the way to a whopping 50.6 inches, all the way down to 25 inches. Now, the reason I'm qualified to talk about FlexiSpot is I've actually personally been using them for the last three years or so. So if you want a nice premium experience, I definitely recommend the E7 Pro. But if you're looking into a more stable frame to have four legs instead of two, then the E7 Plus desk is what you want. Or I will say that the two legs is honestly more than enough in stability. Even the older version that I've owned for the last two, three years has, has been great and it has two legs. They also have ergonomic chairs with flexible adjustments for your back. With Black Friday right around the corner, make sure to check out some of their nice sale. And use my promo code YTE7P50 for $50 off on their premium desks. Thank you, FlexiSpot. Now let's get to the benchmarks. I know that the Ryzen 2600s and RX 580 are outdated, but they perform insanely well at these games. In Call of Duty, we average about 83 FPS on 1080p low. It ran extremely smoothly. Again, you know, nothing insane, no 1440p, 4K, anything like that, but it just runs so well. Apex averaged 106, perfectly playable on a you know, nice 1080p monitor. And similarly in Fortnite, it's just, it, it plays smoothly enough. I mean, it's 145 FPS in performance mode, 1080p. I, this is more than enough for just a kid who needs a Christmas gift. I initially listed this PC for 580. I know along with most of my PCs in this channel, they're, it's pretty overpriced. But again, I don't know how people are okay just making 50 bucks on profit on a PC sale pre-tax. I usually wait about a week or so before I lower prices on my PCs, but this one I just, within three days, I went from 580 to 550. And as soon as I lowered it, I got a message from a guy saying he was interested and wanted to buy it. He asked if I could hold it for a day and I asked if I had Cash App, which I don't have Cash App. I only use Cash or Venmo. I try to avoid certain platforms like Zelle for obvious reasons. But Cash App is one that I'm not entirely sure about. What, what do you guys think? Do you use Cash App? Is it safe? Here's a little snippet from the sale, by the way. I usually put it in the box here, mm -hmm. but this box came with one of the styrofoams, as you can see, a little bit bent up. So yeah. I'm going to leave it this way for you. If you mm -hmm. want, we can put it back in the box or yeah. you can just take it with you. I'm going to try to put it back in the You're box. put it back? Okay. Yeah. All right. Another sale done successfully. Here's the cash. No, 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 no. We're not going to show it because that's tacky. Is that right, baby? Oh, wait. That's right, I leave her at home because I'm a responsible parent who doesn't bring their little baby to Facebook Marketplace meetups. I don't know why I'm being so aggressive. I'm not calling anyone out. Build price was $372.09. Sell price was $550. So net profit of $177.91. Really good profit and sold within three days. This is the build we need to go for. So in a recent episode, we got the Ryzen 5600G, which is a CPU that I've actually never used. So with the recent things not going really well, PCs not really selling well, but then holiday season right around the corner, I thought, let's go back to the basics, build some fish tank. I knew I wanted to build in a fish tank case. I knew I wanted to use these Sama Infinity Mirror fans because I bought them a long time ago and still was sitting on them. It's also what comes pre-installed in a lot of their fish tanky style cases, like in the Nevu 4361 that we sold last episode and the one in this episode as well. So anyway, I wanted to try a fish tank, a DIY PC fish tank case with those. And I thought what better GPU to pair the 5600G than the 6600 XT. So my thought process here is, I feel like the 5600G is one of those CPUs that you might as well get the 5600. You don't need the iGPU for Ryzen. But I feel like from my time, I've seen that a lot of people think it's actually a really good GPU or a CPU for some reason. So I figured let's just try to sell with one of these and maybe people will love it. I wanted to, you know, build something in the $700 range that I could sell for. And I also wanted to see how this PC would perform. So let's go ahead and game a little and see some benchmarks. Since we do a lot of budget PCs in this channel, I was very impressed at the 1080p performance of this PC. And Fortnite averaged 221 on 1080p low. 
under 27 FPS and Call of Duty on 1080p low. Very, very smooth gameplay and an Apex. Since it is a much better CPU compared to like the 2600s, ran a whopping 195 in Apex. 1080p low. It's a, it's a great little PC. I was honestly very impressed by the benchmarks of this PC. I feel like the CPU actually does surprisingly well. It's surprisingly close to the 5600 uh, sort of range of performance. Obviously no reason to get it if you can just get the 5600s. And real quick, I posted this in a local Facebook sales group and this guy bashed the build and said it was a ripoff with this GPU. 6600 XT is a great GPU, sir. And instead of picking on me, go pick on someone like this guy who's trying to sell a 5800X and 3060 PC for $2,800. Now, of course this includes monitor and keyboard and stuff, but anyway. All right, I need to go ahead and get this PC listed and get ready for the Christmas rush. I got tons of parts coming in, tons of cases flying in, but to further complicate things and make my life harder, this year I'm still keeping the GPUs as RX 580s mostly, but I bought a bunch of RX 580s that were mined on. So they still have the mining BIOS. So I need to go <laughs> YouTube and figure out how to flash them back to gaming BIOS. Thanks for watching. <laughs>